TJ revenue sharing in college football, the estimated number is schools paying between 18 to 22, most likely in that 20 to 22 million range on the top end to stay relevant, right? You, you, if you don't pay that to your student athletes moving forward, if this comes to pass, then you are no longer a power in college football. And thus the back half of the big 12, like sorry, Cincinnati, right? The back half of the ACC, sorry, Wake Forest and Syracuse. Th- this I, maybe it's it's better we focus our attention less on expansion and more on just this in general and how it kills what we know about college football. What do you make of this revenue sharing model that could could come about within the next couple of years? Do you want the positive silver lining? <laughs> Is that what you want here? Because I'll give it to you. Uh, that's good. I don't think it's that huge of a deal. Good, I, good. I don't. I don't. They're going to make less money. They're going to mm-hmm. attract lower level recruits. And college football is going to go on like it always has. They never. I mean, when was the last time Wake Forest beat out Alabama or Georgia for a recruit anyway? Like they're still going to recruit about the same levels they always have. Now, could there be minor influx? Could there be minor changes? Absolutely. But Vandy doesn't invest in their football program right now anyway with the money that they're getting in. Right. Yeah. Like some of these teams don't invest like they're getting SEC money and they've never invested back into their football program. But go look at their baseball facilities and go look at their hoops facilities and go yeah. like. So I don't think that it's that big of a deal. Now, maybe Wake Forest loses a few more battles out to Vandy, but I, I don't think it like. I mean, how many of the Big 12 teams right now that are in the Big 12 Mm. are winning battles against the upper echelon of college football and recruiting anyway? In any, in any scenario. So I think it just kind of can I well TJ, I want to pause you right there. So Joe Blow just ran into the comments and is screaming about the Big 12 got one five star out of the high school ranks to Texas <laughs> yeah. Tech. And but that's it. That's only one, right? The rest of the recruiting battles were lost. That's not a good, it's not a good percentage. And they may still get that one guy because you still have as much money as you want to give to that one player. You yeah. certainly can, but you've got to moneyball it. You've got to be a little bit smarter. There's a reason the Tampa Bay Rays, who moneyball it every single year here in my backyard, don't go out and sign a four hundred million dollar contract with anybody because that'd basically be their entire budget. Yeah. But you can kind of moneyball it down and go out and get really good players to compete kind of at your level. I don't think anybody is expecting teams in the Big 12, no offense to the Big 12, to go out and consistently compete for national championships. Like that's just not the level of play that's going to happen. Now, can a Big 12 team win a national championship? Absolutely. Can a team in the ACC go and win a national championship? Absolutely. Is it a little easier for Florida State or Clemson? Maybe Miami, some of those caked in, baked in things. Absolutely. But there's no reason that you can't build up your roster the right way. Use the portal and moneyball your way to having a chance every few years. Now, is it incredibly difficult? Yes. But has it always been incredibly difficult for Wake Forest? Like Wake Forest is not like in a worse position today than they were five years ago. Kansas is not in a worse position today than they were five years ago. They're essentially they're going to recruit like about like they always have. The the upper echelon of college football is going to continue to be that. And the mid-tier teams are going to continue to be mid-tier and the lower tier teams are going to be continue to be lower tier. It's not like all of a sudden Alabama can now buy 150 players like scholarship limits still exist and there's still the same number of recruits. And so I think it all just kind of works out the way that it was before. I, I don't think it'll kill them. There's is my this, ultra positive spin. Yeah. Is there is there some attrition that comes with this? You mentioned Vanderbilt there too. At how like can we finally put the Purdue's and the Vanderbilt's away and then looking at the top of the Big 12, like a a Utah or a Kansas State or even a TCU who have the money to pay that 22 million, can they now insert themselves into the upper tier and the back half again, like a a, a Purdue, they just kind of go away, wither away. I I don't think so. Okay. Like I think they'll I think they'll I think it'll largely continue on. And I also think in four or five years, when we maybe get to some kind of semblance of a super conference, maybe some kind of a super league that includes the Big Ten, SEC, and Big 12, maybe merging together. I think it mostly gets ironed out then because I still think what you're going to have all this NIL craziness and transfer portal craziness, and everything else that we've got right now, you're, it's still going to be wild. Like it's yeah. still going to be crazy with all the stuff that comes out. And so hopefully we get to a point and I know that, you know, Joe blow in the comments is going to go nuts over this too. Hopefully we just get to a point where we're paying these kids the same thing, right? We're paying them as employees. We're paying them as contracts. Like we just kind of like stop all of this insanity that's going on. And I think that also helps level everything out too. Yeah.
Yeah. And if, by the way, if you are Joe Blow in the comments, which I have probably been before in my life, though now as the more I research, the more I see, hey, wait a second. Auburn's been paying guys for decades. Now that we can all do it legally, we're maybe evening the playing field even more than it used to be when the bag men in the SEC were even more efficient than anybody else in the country. With this, when it becomes legal, now we put it all out on the table and say, look, bring your big guns. If you've got a massive, you've got a J.B. Hunt in your back pocket like Arkansas did to bring in John Calipari, Mm -hmm. now you can flex that as a school in Arkansas who was not a top half brand in the SEC. But the money allows them to be on the forefront of that. T.J. Pittenger, locked on. This is locked on Big 12. Your college football addiction. Where can folks find more of your work? Yeah, College Football Addiction right here on YouTube. If you're listening audio only, just College Football Addiction, really easy to find all exclusively on YouTube. We're not anywhere else. Don't have a Twitter, don't have a Facebook for you to go find or a podcast or anything. It's all on YouTube, College Football Addiction. At CJ Pittenger, this is Drake Toll. Hey, thanks for following along today with expansion news across the Big 12, ACC, and all of college football. Come back tomorrow. We'll talk even more of that as well as the transfer portal and this big revenue sharing thing. This has been and always will be locked on. Thanks for making it your first listen every single day. Dose Grande.